Hey, man. What's up? Have you ever heard of Thomas Midgley Jr.? Thomas M- M- McGonagall Midgley Midgley Thomas Midgley Jr. Jr. No, I've heard of his dad though. <laughs> Senior <laughs> Thomas Midgley. Yeah, Jr. Thomas Midgley Jr. No, I have no idea who we're uh, talking about. You might recognize this quote <laughs> from uh, 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 what did he John say? I can Robert. do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That's a different guy. Uh, this is a quote from John Robert McNeil, the renowned, uh, renowned, <laughs> the really round <laughs> environmental <laughs> historian. Okay. Um, he said of uh, Thomas Thomas Mitchell, Mitchell, Jr. Jr. He said um, that Thomas had more of an adverse impact on our planet than any other single organism in the Earth's history. Okay. Uh, He's a good guy. What do you just like chop down forest after forest for the sport? (laughs) If you dress nice enough, we're going to be super rich. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, because this is going to work fantastic. Long story short, one day he got tangled up in these ropes and they killed him. Um, Oh, really? He didn't die of the polio. (laughs) How much gasoline would you drink for a couple million dollars? Uh, But luckily he died early, so we were able to kind of take back everything. Things I learned last night. Thomas Midgley Jr. Uh, he was born in 1889 okay. uh, in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Uh, they named it that because there's a beaver who trips a lot in town. <laughs> who can't walk straight. <laughs> the bar is called the Drunk Beaver. The Drunk Beaver. Uh, but he's not drunk. He just is just, coordinated. He looks like it. <laughs> he just, yeah, he's just waddles and falls. Um, so uh, Thomas Midgley Jr. was a an engineer. Okay. Um, it, it, mechanical and chemical. He did both. Uh, well over a hundred. Is patents. he like responsible for the oil industry or what? Well, well offer <laughs> well over a hundred patents to his name. Okay. Uh, two of those patents, however, have been banned. Um, and uh, by was, who? Uh, <laughs> most. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. the response I'll give you. <laughs> banned by most. <laughs> banned by most. Um, it's estimated that those two inventions, well, one of the two inventions, actually. Um, the first one, it's estimated that that has killed over 100 million people globally. Uh, and the other is estimated that it has cost the collective American IQ 824 million points since the 1940s. Um, so maybe that IQ is not as in, I should have led with that. That killing 100 million people was more significant than dropping the what IQ. What did he a create? Bunch. The United States government? Television. Um, just kidding. No, Thomas Midgley Jr. Uh, well, I sh- we should provide some backstory first actually before we get into Thomas Midgley Jr. Okay. Um, have you ever heard of the automobile? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so So he did he is responsible for the oil industry. Uh, but not the oil industry. Okay. But he is adjacent to the oil industry. Adjacent. Got it. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Who says things like that? Go ahead. Uh, okay. Um, ooh, automobiles. Have you ever heard of them? Sure. <laughs> so he. Not Horseless him. carriages. In, in, in pre 1920, automobiles. I don't know why I keep saying automobiles. It yeah. just makes them sound older. If you say sure. car, it sounds more modern. Is car short for carriage? I think so. Yeah. Is automobile short for automobile? Automobile. <laughs> automobile. But that was too much of a mouthful. Yeah. So they said automobile. Um, automobiles. Which is much easier to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pre 1920. Yeah. They didn't start with like a key or anything like that or a push to start or a <laughs> remote start. They didn't have any of that yet. <laughs> sure. Um, what they had was Those feelings was you open and up the, you had to go out and be like, hello, I feel please start like I'm ready to drive. <laughs> no, what you had to do was you had to go <laughs> like with your feet underneath the car <laughs> and get you didn't. Do you know what I'm referencing? Yeah, fun sounds. Okay. Why did you do that weird roadrunner noise? Because it was then? the same sound you make. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, mine was which is like a, you know Flintstones feet and yours was yeah, which is like all right. Get me there. Okay. There's more. No, 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 no. You're rolling. It's okay. a ding, ding. it's like oh, now I've lost it, Tim. 
Morse code. It's not Morse code. Oh, I, oh, I got it. Your directing has got me. Yabba dabba do. No, I was close enough. <laughs> Kinda, yeah. I was getting there. No, uh, you open up the hood and there was a little, uh, like, kind of like a tire iron. So easy to steal. That you stuck into the engine and yeah. you cranked it. You cranked yeah. it over to turn it over. Um, and that's how you started the car. Yeah. The problem was when. Like when you go camping and you've got one of those little lamps that's battery powered. Yeah. And, and you and crank you, it. Yeah, you know? exactly. Or like you got a toy, mm-hmm. you know, the crank on the back, you crank it to get it to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The early nuclear bombs were the same. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of unlucky fellows. <laughs> um, it, it, this was uh, one difficult. Like it wasn't, this wasn't a like, oh, I'm great. It was like, Oh, I'm cranking. And like this is hard to crank this engine start. You know. Yeah. Um, I, I, it was it was tough enough where it was literally <laughs> advertised that women can't start cars, um, which is also something that <laughs> at the time they probably would have just said even if it was just easy. said anyway. Yeah. 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 No, <laughs> you're a poor old lady. You can't crank that, uh, <laughs> soldier that- boy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And so it was, but it was also dangerous because if you left that crank in there too long, it would start spinning with the engine and engines and then it would like take your arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So it was actually like a a genuinely dangerous way to start a vehicle, but they just hadn't come up with a better way to do it yet Um, until um, a uh, relatively notable person in um, the automotive industry driving along the road and there just happened to be um, a damsel in distress whose car was on the side of the road. She couldn't get to start. So he pulls over to help her crank starts her engine and a rather common issue happened where he didn't get the crank out in time and it popped up and it caught him in the jaw and it broke his jaw um, and he actually died as a result of his injuries. That was the time where a broken jaw could kill you. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I think it, I think it's more well, of like the head trauma probably did it. Yeah, that or an infection after the fact. Oh, maybe uh, e- either or sure, but either way he got he got this injury and later died because of that injury and a close colleague of him Charles Ketterling um, who Kettering who worked for a research institute that worked closely with the automotive industry was like we need to come up with a better yeah. solution for this people are getting hurt. We got to fill out an incident report about this. <laughs> Do you want to tell your story? No, it's an active case. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, I can't talk about it. My <laughs> lawyer is involved. <laughs> you don't have a lawyer. You're representing yourself. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> <laughs> on the advice of my counsel, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this guy gets injured, dies. Yeah, yeah, and a friend of his. Um, basically invents the key the to start okay. that way. Um, this changed the game um, and he was like, well, the women are going to lose these <laughs> <laughs> and so he came up with air tags not people don't know that that was out a long time ago. No, um, in creating that though, um, the first vehicle that used it was um, uh, a, a different, a slightly different style of engine okay. uh, that compressed the fuel a little bit more than normal. And so because of that, it was significantly louder than most engines on the market. I want to know. I asked him before we started recording. I said, you got interesting topics today or boring ones? Hey, and he said interesting. Hey, <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, hey, yeah, go ahead, hey, buddy. Hey, hey, don't worry. No, in the don't worry. Before we'll get there. We'll get there. The engines, the the type of oil that would squeeze through the engine would just you know compress hey, this it. Is, this is important backstory. Backstory is always boring, okay. Okay. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I trust you. These in, the engine in this car was really loud. Also, because it compressed, this more, just feels like we're it, on a roller coaster, and it's like, ding, 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 ding. You know, do you do the sound? <laughs> <laughs> Stupid, <laughs> dumb, <laughs> bad. You know, and you're going, tick, 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 tick. That's what it feels like right now. Yeah, cool. I'm glad you feel like that. I there's no end in sight to the top of the hill, though. We're just going. The roller coaster is just that. There's another station at the top. 
and then they they empty it. Everyone has to walk up the stairs, <laughs> and they were on the they were on the coaster <laughs> through this empty, wild, crazy amazing ride. track. Part Break. of the track's missing. It leaps yeah. over to the other. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. But the the EPA said no one can ride this. It's too dangerous. Right, but they'd already built it, so they were so like, they just shoot. Second stage, <laughs> and they were like, that is a. <laughs> Yeah, but all the theming is still there. <laughs> and so it's like, come on, guys, we got to get going. And it just takes off without you, you know? Yeah, uh-huh. It's very. Oof. Um, <laughs> so, so this engine was really loud and it was also prone to misfiring. And that misfiring was also ri- ridiculously loud and bad for the engine. And so Kettering had a problem um, that he needed to solve, which was this misfiring thing and this, the, how. Uh, compressed the fuel got in this. Sure. And so he hires Thomas Mindley Jr. Great. to come up with a solution for this. And so he tries a lot of different additives to add to gasoline to make it to where it doesn't compress as hard and doesn't lead to these yeah. potential failures. Fanta orange soda, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. corn syrup. He actually did try corn syrup. I know. He tried a lot of different things. Um, and a difficult. Uh, well, maybe not difficult, but annoying job probably because he did this. Uh, I mean, just a ridiculous amount of tests. And he actually has a quote where he said, um, "The majority of the things he tried was like spitting in the Great Lakes," um, which I like that phrase. Uh, you, you can't say spitting in the Great Lakes. You got to say spitting in the Great Lakes. Yeah, there you go. Thanks. Oh, it flows better. Um, it, yeah, it's like automobile versus automobile. <laughs> Doesn't have the same. <laughs> doesn't flow. have the same it flow. It doesn't flow as well. It's all about the flow. So Thomas Midgley Jr. Here's a picture of him while we're here. Glad we um, got this. Thomas Midgley Jr. Um, he went to work and he realized, oh hey, um, it's like the 1920s. Okay. Uh, there's this thing that's everywhere called lead, and he said, what if I put some lead in it? Oh, did he put the lead in the paint and all that stuff. Well, he put lead in everything gasoline first. Well, yeah. And then everything else. And then everything uh, else. And then a lot. He of led things. the way. Yeah, he led the way. Um, and he. <laughs> here's the thing. <clears throat> it worked great. It worked. It did exactly what they needed it to do. Sure. It was a huge success. And it was also one of the cheapest additives that he found. Okay. And so he came to Kettering and he said, "We're going to be super rich." <laughs> yeah. Uh, because this is going to work fantastic. Uh, and they renamed. Uh, they. They packaged up this additive version of gasoline. They um, added a like second additive to it, really, so they could just brand the gasoline as ethyl. Um, and they okay. intentionally did not include the fact that lead was in this and any of their marketing or any of their packaging. Lead was a major component in this, but they intentionally didn't include it because at the time. Even at that time, they knew that lead was bad, very bad for you. They knew that probably about 150 years before this, there's, there's documentation of uh, Thomas lead Jefferson poisoning. talking about how dangerous lead is. That okay. he was sick from his lead stuff. His pencil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mechanical pencils are making me sick. That's what he said. <laughs> That's a direct quote from Thomas Jefferson. One of my personal favorites. <laughs> Hey, August 31st, uh, you've got plans. Do you've I? You've got plans. You've got plans. Uh, Google Play is hosting a live stream on their YouTube channel. Yes, they are. Um, and we are hosting that live there. stream that they're hosting. <laughs> 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 we're going to be in it. Yeah, we're so, going to be having a lot of fun. We're going to be playing games. Clear um, eight hours of your day. Yeah, <laughs> whatever it takes a PTO to watch us on this live you know, stream. <laughs> if you or don't go to your job and yeah. give very minimal effort that day. <laughs> Put us on your phone, tablet, yeah. laptop, whatever it is. Yeah. We're going to be hanging out all day with Google Play on mm-hmm. August thirty first. Yeah, pretty exciting stuff. Spam the chat, say our name over and over and over again. And so they started marketing this ethyl. Uh, they ran into issues pretty quickly. Okay. Because they had a manufacturing plant that their people, their manufacturers were getting lead poisoning at. And they were like, what's this about? <laughs> and they were like, ah. Have you been. Seems like we're in an ethic. <laughs> ethyl coal <laughs> dilemma. Ethylical dilemma. <laughs> Did you just say ethylical?
Uh-huh. Uh huh. We're trying yeah, to coin yeah. it. It's it's. <laughs> we're really trying to get it going. <laughs> It's for ethical that, issues. And what do you think about like if something's really cool? <laughs> what if we say that's drenched, dude? What if we use wet as a barometer for how cool something is? That way, if it's not cool, we can say that's dry. I'm that's just trying. To, I'm, I'm just, just trying. To, I'm just. I'm just an inventor. I'm just spitting I'm the gray like <laughs> you know. I'm just trying to to get it out there. You know. What if you know? But anyway, eth- ethical. Eth- ethical. Yeah. Ethical. Um, yeah, yeah, they're so, getting. Yeah, of course they're getting lead poisoning. Yeah, they're getting lead poisoning. Um, and so the. Uh, <laughs> I wonder what would cause that. The. Uh, uh, and he's like, shh, 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 shh. The rest of the world was like, "What's going on? What's happening there?" Nothing. So he hires Edward Bernays. <laughs> he actually holds a press conference to say, "Hey, yeah, there's a little bit of lead in this." It's a, it's not a bad amount of lead. Like it's not a dangerous amount of lead. Like maybe if you work there. Like, but we're kind of up our safety precautions. At our manufacturing plant, so that'll be fine. And he said, "But watch, like I can pour this gasoline all over my hands. I can lick my hands afterwards, and I'm fine." And he did that at the press conference uh, to show that, like, hey, this isn't dangerous. And everyone was like, <laughs> "It's like, what, is there a movie that I'm thinking of?" <laughs> yes. What is it where he's created a cleaning solution, and he goes on like QVC, and the whole thing is that you can drink his cleaning solution. Oh my uh, gosh! What uh, movie is this? Is that movie about Apple? What? That movie about Apple? Yeah, like there's the a whole side Apple? story about a guy who made a a cleaning <laughs> solution. No, there's some movie. He makes a cleaning solution, and the whole thing is that you can drink. You know, he's like he he like can't drink my competitor stuff, and he like drinks there. You know, <laughs> <laughs> he's like this will mess you up. <laughs> I can't think what it is. I'll find it later. <laughs> Yeah, so that's what he does. And yeah, he drinks it on QVC. <laughs> he goes out to a press conference. He goes he's pouring it all over. Himself. And like they're not filming at the time. They don't got yeah. that right. So he's yeah. just a bun- in front of a bunch of newsies. Right? Yeah, he's like, go tell the town I did. Tell this. everyone. Extra, extra. <laughs> Soggy man says the lead is safe. <laughs> Midgley got Letty, and it's good. Uh, <laughs> Letty's their mascot. <laughs> So he he Who gets ties ironically of like you know anyway and so because this is so cheap yeah and because it solves the problem sure the world is lining up to get some of his leaded fuel um, and so it becomes a huge thing in gasoline that's why all gas has unleaded yeah well now that yeah uh, the next part of the story is why right now okay. it's, this is the leaded part right of the story. no no I this understand. is the pre unleaded is. I'm going to ask a clarifying question in the middle of this episode. Yes. Is the fact that all gas pumps say unleaded, is that where your story gets interesting? Because. Yeah, we're getting interesting now. No, no, no. I'm here. I'm interested. I'm interested. (laughs) You know, I'm here. The, 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 the snowball is the snowball is picking up. The snowball is picking up. They can't all be winners, folks. Oh my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's okay. Have you ever been to a TED talk where, like, in the middle of the TED talk, someone's just like, "Hey, when does this get good?" <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've been to a few church services like that. <laughs> I've actually been to a performance of Shrek the Musical at this high school, where this when little kid was like, "What are they doing?" <laughs> it's one of the best videos I've seen. <laughs> it's just them being like, "You may kiss the bride." <laughs> Give the context. It's oh, it's Shrek the musical. <laughs> That's the context. <laughs> no, Shrek is supposed to bust in and stop the met the wedding yeah, between yeah, Lord yeah, Farquaad yeah. and Fiona. Yeah, but he misses and, his uh, cue. Misses his cue. <laughs> and a so, so Lord <laughs> Farquaad like 45 and seconds. Fiona are just standing on. It's a high school production, <laughs> and they're just standing out there. No one says a <laughs> word. word. They just none of the wait. actors say it. They just, they just. The, I mean, in a normal scenario, maybe the priest would say his line again to yeah. try to be like, "Yeah, hey, you may kiss yeah, your bride." The cue. But it just looks like Lord Farquaad was a awkward homeschooler. <laughs> yeah, you know? who doesn't know? And he's the kiss like, part. <laughs> let's yeah. high five instead." You yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. And then Shrek comes <laughs> out. I don't know. Well, then this kid shouts. What are you doing? What are they doing? Which is very funny. <laughs> and then Shrek comes up and goes, 
hold the wedding you know? <laughs> or whatever <laughs> he, he says. runs up to the stage that's yeah, a good scene it's a good scene uh yeah it's a very similar scenario. we love watching high school productions of we should go to more high school productions <laughs> yeah the way you said that made you realize that i don't know if we're allowed to do no, that i think we're old enough now yeah we could pretend that like we're related to one of them or something well i'm saying like there's an age there's an age like college into where we are now like if you're like 20 something and hanging out you're either a youth pastor yeah. or a creep or both. Yeah, and yeah. Um, now we're at the age where it's like we can <laughs> just go <laughs> to support local theater. Uh, maybe if you dress nice enough. You think, <laughs> you think if we show up in tuxes, <laughs> they let us in. Top hat, cane. I'm saying <laughs> it doesn't look like we're trying to sneak into prom anymore. It's very clear we're not high schoolers. <laughs> <laughs> and you're saying <laughs> if we go to a local high school production yeah. of Greece yeah. in Texas, then they'll go. I'm talking ah, the long some tail regular gentlemen. Yes. We get dropped off in a limo. Yeah. yeah. I, the more we joke about this, the more I want to do <laughs> the it. The more it just did I get. <laughs> this is phenomenal. We're we just, hire security those details. Those are really sharply dressed for this. Yeah, <laughs> we get like a full security team. Of Greece. We buy twenty <laughs> tickets so that there's no we seats the around room. us. You know what I'm saying? And so then we just sit. <laughs> to be fair, high school production tickets are like three dollars a pop. Like we could easily buy. That's a row. what I. <laughs> you and I are on the same page. I mean, I feel like the the real power move is you buy like. A six by six grid of seats just in the That's middle of the second center. We're all on the yeah. same page. Because that way you also have like your whole security detail and you have surrounding. To like, or, yeah. Well, no. You you have just like people all around the perimeter of it. So you have your entire detail that has to then come into the building and be like, oh excuse, 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 sorry, excuse me. Sorry. Sorry. Excuse me. Yeah. Your bottle of water, sir. We buy every single ticket except one. <laughs> No, that's what you do to Chris Angel. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying, though. If you bought every ticket to a Chris Angel show, you'd find out there's plants there. Yeah, you would. Yeah. You'd be like, wait a minute. No. Wait a minute. I bought all the tickets. <laughs> I know for a fact. Why are there you four people here? I know for a fact. <laughs> You're not real. <laughs> She's not real. <laughs> that audience member. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, local theater productions. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, speaking of local theater productions, um, the whole industry bought on to all this stuff. They were like, right? let's do they it. were stoked, and so like ninety different uh, and the industry awards were given to Thomas Midgley because he like changed the world or something. Um, but he missed all of the uh, acceptance ceremonies because he was in Miami. Because he was recovering from lead poisoning, uh, <laughs> I'm not meaning to laugh at that. But <laughs> and the the reason he went to is because he washed his hands in the stuff. Well, no, well, I mean, he because he was around the lead all the sure. time, and so he got lead poisoning. And what he said was, "I'm gonna go to Miami for a little bit um, to heal of my lead poisoning and breathe fresh air." Uh, he said he thought, that. Yeah, he thought that. I guess. The thing that fixes lead poisoning is fresh air. So I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if he had lead poisoning or if he just wanted a long vacation. Yeah. Either way, he missed all of his acceptance. I'm going to stay home from work for two weeks. I and... have lead poisoning. <coughs> <laughs> My doctor says so. You got to go. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Hires the high school senior to act like the doctor. <laughs> Hi, um, uh, Thomas. Is lead. Thomas is lead. <laughs> is you can dead. tell. You can tell he's lead by the way his skin looks like silver. <laughs> he's like painted gray. <laughs> Thomas is. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> He's got lead boys. <laughs> He's also Shrek. 
<laughs> Not a lot of people know that's what the, how that happened. So the fairy tale goes. So he himself has lead poisoning. He himself gets lead, he's in lead Miami. poisoning. He's in Miami. He's in Miami. He's healing up from it. Famously, breathing, breathing fresh air, um, where you can rolling heal. in the money. Um, and uh, his his buddy, um, the, Mr. Uh, Kettering, Kettering, gets a contract from a refrigeration company, and the company says, "Hey, the chemicals that we're using to refrigerate stuff are." Uh, pretty volatile, which they need to be for refrigeration, but they shouldn't be this volatile. They're like a lot of our fridges are blown up, um, and they're like obviously that's not something we want with our fridges. Mm-hmm. Um, he's like, can you come up with a solution for that? And so he calls up Thomas in Miami and says, I need you to come home. And he said, he's like, no, I'm busy. He said, I need you to come home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so he, comes, he gets on the next flight home. <laughs> I hate you so much for that. Hey, thanks for checking out our show. If you like it and you want to support, be a part of what we're doing here, you can do that by becoming a patron. Uh, what happens there is you get to be in the community. Uh, we have a Discord with our hosts and producers. We have a lot of fun. We're super active in there every day. You get access to ad-free content a week before everybody else. And we have a Zoom every month with our patrons. Uh, we hang out, we eat pizza, we get to know you a little bit better. Uh, it's a blast. And there's a ton of other uh, different benefits like merch discounts, uh, birthday messages, things like that that are super cool. Uh, if you want to be in that, uh, you can just text Tillin to 66866 uh, and that'll get you right in there. Um, if not, we're just super glad that you're here uh, and thanks for watching our show. He gets on the next flight home and uh, Kettering's like, we got, we got a new project. He said, you got to come up with a new fuel source for uh, refrigerators. For refrigerators. And so he invents Freon, long story <clears throat> short, um, which is a big part of yeah. fridges and AC units and still cars to um, this day. Yeah, they they call them uh, CFCs, uh, but they branded it as Freon. They brand named it Freon, sure, um, because again, the contents of it are toxic to human consumption or consumption. I don't know if that's the right word. Human touch. Yeah, just being around it kills you. Uh, is the point of the story, I guess. Human touch. I mean, touch and smell. Human <laughs> touch kills you. And yeah, well, depending on your your enneagram type. That's what I learned <laughs> in youth group. That's what I learned at church camp. The human touch will kill you. Yeah, that's tr- well. It depends on the human. <laughs> <laughs> um. So so he invents Freon, and uh, it's another huge success. Big hit. They are absolutely rolling, and it's super rich. Well, good. They're going to need it to pay their legal fees for the. <laughs> Other stuff. Yeah, so uh, people start to discover that um, uh, both of these things are really bad for you. Um, but it takes a while, like the 50s or 60s. And now well, we still use Freon, though. <laughs> uh, kinda. Okay. Um, so, so lead was banned from being in gasoline. Okay. Uh, and it was kind of like a. In slow, what year is this? It well. After he died, so maybe maybe I should maybe I should finish Thomas's story for a second. Thomas uh, went on to invent a lot of other stuff, got super rich, was relatively noteworthy throughout his life, um, and then he got polio, um, and couldn't walk anymore. So he invented some stuff to help him be able to walk. And one of the things he invented was a bed that could move, like a <laughs> hospital bed does now. Like oh, bend forward. I want you to I want you to know what I <laughs> picture. <laughs> Was a full bed, that could stand up like a transformer, <laughs> and like half the bed would be his legs. <laughs> you know, like, like, the, like it would bend up, and the, the bed whole, could the move. Whole bed. The whole the bed, whole mattress, move and down the hall. <laughs> that's, I want you to know that's what I picture. Twin size or king size? Well, I mean, probably full. <laughs> you know, queens might be a little too wide for. It's a yeah. one person bed. Yeah, they make yeah, it for yeah. couples. Well, he could. <laughs> And it's it's like it's like a uh uh what's that a three legged race Siamese twins the the one in the middle doesn't switch <laughs> so it's a, you have to sink so it up so you got a three <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 it's yeah. like your it's like what's your sleep number you know it's like <laughs> you're walking too fast slow down um yeah so he invented who's a, this who's the fast walker you or Bree mm, usually me. Okay. Every once in a while, Bree speeds up for some reason. Sure, but it's usually me. Depends on Why? where we're at. Sometimes, you, usually it's me. Yeah, but if we're at Disney, 
Uh, Reagan <laughs> is sprinting everywhere to get her pins. Yeah, my buttons. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, he invented this bed that moves up and down, um, but the it was it was primitive. It wasn't like our modern hospital beds. Right, all, right, right. all buttons things. It was like a series of pulleys and ropes and stuff that like moved it. <laughs> Yeah, it had this. It crank. also had lead in it. <laughs> like, it just none of it was like good, you know. Um, and so he, uh, long story short, one day he got tangled up in these ropes and they killed him. Um, oh, really? He didn't die of the polio. <laughs> I mean, he died of his machine. Uh, yeah, but it wasn't. It wasn't. It, <laughs> He wouldn't have died if it weren't for polio. So he died because of the polio. But also, I guess, sure, sure, I guess. <laughs> but this was November second, nineteen forty-four, uh, the very end of the war. Um, early enough to where I, I don't think he was aware of what was about to happen with all of his inventions and how negative an impact he had on the world. Um, however, so why did they say how, he's responsible for a hundred thousand because of World War Two? Yeah, he started World War Two. No, H- however, there is so publicly it was he was moving his bed and he got tangled up and uh, there is reports that it was he did it on purpose. Oh, and that's sadder than I thought people, you were going to say. Some people think that it was um, uh, the guilt because he he knew that lead was bad for you. He knew that lead was bad for you, and he was lying about it. Um, and he went to extensive la- lengths like that. That first um, uh, to prove it was fine. To prove it was fine, even though he knew it. All experts knew sure. that lead consumption was bad, and so he knew it was a dangerous thing. But he got was getting really rich, so he just t- turned a blind eye. Same thing with Freon. When Freon came out, um, he inhaled a bunch of Freon like it was helium, and blew out a candle to show them like, "Hey, it's safe." It wasn't, and he knew it wasn't. But he was like, he was like, "I'll do it once to make a couple million dollars. It'll be fine." Uh, <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> how much gasoline would you drink for <laughs> a couple million dollars? You know, that's the thing, though. I don't know how much gasoline you can drink. <laughs> he knows exactly how much you can drink. <laughs> if I understood how much you can drink, sure, I'll drink a gallon or two. <laughs> if that's how much you can drink, that's yeah, true. Like if I the amount, just, you're saying that if the amount is, let's say the, the let's say the amount is three ounces, and you go, yeah. I'll drink a gallon or two. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know the amount is three ounces. You're like, ah, oh, if I know it's three ounces, I'll drink a gallon or two. <laughs> no, 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 no. If I know it's three ounces, I will I'll hold you to what you said originally. Or two. <laughs> if I think it's a gallon, or you three, would drink that amount. I would drink as close as I can get to the legal amount. Without going legal over the amount. Legal amount. <laughs> Have you seen that episode of? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> All right, you see that video of the girl who uh, couldn't figure out how to <laughs> unstop the gas thing. And so her gas thing is. <laughs> oh, and she's like spraying it all over the place. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And she's like, "What do I do?" She said, "It's okay. It's only three ounces. <laughs> it's not enough." <laughs> she, she's like, <sighs> she's like "You can light a match. It's fine. It's not enough oh to catch on gosh. fire." <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, he knew it was bad, and so a lot of people thought that he was like maybe the way down with the sure because he knew it was a problem. I don't think he recognized how big of a problem it was, and I don't think he knew Freon was as big of a problem as it was. But here's some things that we've learned after the fact. Um, obviously, uh, I've alluded to it. I think I actually flat out said um, that lead was um, banned. Lead paint was banned in '78, um, and lead but that's additives so much longer started than when he getting died. banned. Yeah, and by the end of the '70s, lead was banned from just about everything. Sure, it was in a lot of chemical usages. And it was banned from just about everything. Um, what's interesting. Is we know that especially for children, that lead just like being around lead and breathing that in um, uh, limits your cognitive growth. Um, specifically, parts of the brain um, that are related to like decision making. Mm-hmm. And so, there's a very interesting correlation that's been drawn um, of uh, the crime rate in. Connection to lead being in gasoline and paint. 
Um, so here's a graph. Um, the black line is the uh, blood lead content level of children in the United States. The red line is the crime rate, uh, violent crime rate in the United States. Um, this is adjusted 20 years. So you'll notice the graph at the bottom has two sets of numbers. And so when lead started being popularly used in the nation 20 years later, the violent crime rate started to rise. And as it got more common, it peaked and it, it follows pretty closely. And then when lead got outlawed 20 years later, the violent crime rate started to, to plummet. And okay. This is true, not just in the US, but globally. This is, these are graphs of Australia, oh, wow. Canada, Great Britain, New Zealand. Um, and so this isn't just like a thing where it's like, oh, this happened in the US. It happened everywhere in the world. And uh, everywhere in the world banned it. And <laughs> when they did, um, the violent crime rate started to, to plummet significantly, which is very interesting. Um, huh. <clears throat> yeah. It feels like it does seem like they all hit us like a stagnation point, though. Yeah, yeah, that's just the normal crime. That's, that's the normal human propensity to crime. <laughs> I mean, you're going to crime. <laughs> They're going to crime. Um, I just needed to pull over and get a good crime in. Um, sorry, cry. I meant cry. <laughs> That's what we all said, right? We all said cry. Ah, yeah. Yeah, I like to cry from time to time. <laughs> Sometimes I just like to release what's in me. I just need a good crime. A crime session. I just session. need to get a good crime in. I'm yeah. just trying to get a good crime in. Um, but uh, yeah, and the, and that that led led to the lead caused. A collective IQ drop of 824 million points in the United States. Wow, uh, which is a lot. So, it, it, and then a lot of people died of lead poisoning. So there's a, a lot of people estimated 100 million people who died of lead poisoning or lead poisoning related illnesses. Um, How many people? 100 million uh, globally during this time phase when lead became popular, popularly used because of him. Sure, um, but it wasn't just the lead. It was the free. The free almost a big thing too. Uh, uh, CFCs. Uh, got banned uh, in 1994. Uh, and what's really interesting is uh, in 2020, Freon as we know it was completely banned as well. <laughs> They've got a new version. <laughs> okay. It's, uh, yeah, the guy came and he drank a bunch of it. Sure. Um, but the, there's evidence that the CFCs uh, were the reason for the hole in the ozone layer because it was used in not just Freon and air conditioning and refrigeration, yeah. but that was like the main component in like Febreze sprays, like anything that was a spray, and those went up in the atmosphere. Did you see all those videos a couple years ago? They were like, remember like in 2014 when people were talking about the whole nose on layer, and then one day we just stopped hearing about it. <laughs> Do you remember those videos? <laughs> and you're like, yeah, man, we did stuff and it fixed yeah. that. Well, a lot of people think it's the banning of the CFCs because. Well, I'll the time, tell you what I know is the cause the hole in the ozone layer. Tell me about it. Well. It was when God reached in and pulled the Garden of Eden out and made it into like the moon. What I'm gonna say, okay? <laughs> but I've got these little pucks around my house. <laughs> all right, it's all this organ. Or yeah. Um, what are we looking at now? So this is the Earth from above, the northest pole. Okay. <laughs> uh, and, and in this graphic, uh, the hole in the ozone. If you look up at the top in '79. That little tiny blue area is the area that's okay. Okay. Um, as you move along in time, the blue area is the area that's getting better. So we have a kind of rough patch that's happening right now. But for the most part, ever since CFCs got banned, um, the ozone layer has been healing and getting, getting a lot better. Um, had we not banned in '79, a lot of climate <coughs> experts say that the planet probably would have been uninhabitable by 2060. Um, and now it, they expect the hole in the ozone layer to be gone and completely healed by 2060. Um, and so this guy, potentially, I mean, the, the climate issue is this guy's fault, also. Um, so, good legacy. Okay. <laughs> he, <laughs> uh, yeah. So he killed the most people out of anyone ever. <laughs> Damaged the planet almost. 
irreparably. irreparably. Right. Uh, but luckily he died early, so we were able to kind of take back everything. I think they took back his rewards, but he never accepted them, so it was fine too. Well, it's because I went back in time <laughs> to November 2nd, 1944. And you said, hey, don't you need to lean your bed up for something? And I only killed one of them. <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who was another person you would have killed in 1944? Who's ah. everyone say they go back in time to kill? Mm. But really, Walt Disney. Yep. <laughs> but really, you killed. You killed the guy who was more dangerous. Have I said that on this show? More dangerous. Of like the if time travels real. Yeah. And like someone hasn't gone back and killed Hitler. Then there's something. There's somebody worse. There was someone worse, that yeah. did get killed. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Well, it's an interesting concept. Hmm. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that, that's Thomas Midgley. Uh, he was uh, most dangerous man who's ever lived, I guess, technically. That's what we're going with, okay. Big nerd though, big nerd. Big nerd. Big danger what nerd. What a lurder. Big danger nerd. Sir. Yeah, yeah. All right, are we ready to end this then? Uh, yeah, do okay. you have something that you want to Yeah, hold on, do? I got to say. What are they doing? Fiddle off then. <laughs> hey, thanks for making it to the end of this video. Uh, if you like this and you want more episodes, there's more somewhere around here and also clips from the show, uh, but make sure you subscribe. Please do that. That really helps us. Um, it makes us feel good. We look at the number and we go, oh my gosh, there's more people who like us. Um, and it also just makes sure that you don't miss episodes in the future because we put these out every single week and there's so many in the past, so many old episodes you can go watch. And you know, there's an entire season of episodes that we didn't even have video for. So you can go listen to those if you'd like to as well. Thanks for being here. We will see you again next week on, on things I learned last night. That's this podcast, called, right? right? That's this one. Yeah, that's the one. Things that's, I learned last night. That's the one. All right, you're free to go. Great. <laughs>